Okay, so here we are again. We had our paddle set up, uh, but things looked a little weird. So let's fix all those weird little issues we were running into before. Uh, first thing we want to do is you hit, if you hit play, see, you can't really see what you're looking at too much. It's a little bizarre, right? So let's solve that right now. We're going to set up an independent camera. So that's going to be a camera that's going to float right where this I'm looking at right now. That way we can see what we're looking at. So we're going to do that. We're going to do that in the uh, level blueprint. Before we jump into there, Let's just go ahead and create a camera. Type into here and grab a camera. And we'll go to unlit mode so we can see what we're looking at. Sometimes that's an issue. You see you got a little camera guy here. Go ahead and just uh, look in the camera actor view here. Rotate that 90 degrees down. And drag that guy up. Drag it up until you can see what everything we're looking at here. That looks pretty good. Okay, so now we got that. So you say, okay, we'll hit play, and no, it doesn't connect to that camera. So what's going on? Well, we need to tell it to use this camera, because normally in video games you have a camera that's somehow attached to the character. In Pong, it's kind of a unique example where you need an independent camera that's kind of floating above and isn't really related to the characters. So how do we do that? It's actually not too bad. Uh, what we're going to do is, um, hold on one second here. We're going to basically go into our level blueprint, and we're going to tell it to use that camera. So click on your camera, so that way you, uh, you have it highlighted. Go to Blueprints, go to Open Level Blueprint. And I'll open up a new window here. And then right click right in here and type and just click Create Reference to Camera Actor. You have to have Context Sensitive on. Good. Now we have a reference to the camera in our scene that we're going to use, which is what we want. And then you get to type this in. Right click and hit Set View Target with Blend. You'll see, oops, just Blend. You'll see nothing will come up. Click Out of Context Sensitive and then it does come up. Set View Target with Blend. This basically makes it so that you can set the camera to whatever you want. That sounds like a, it's quite an interesting name for it, but it, it really is exactly what you want. So go ahead and plug the execution pin in. Then right click uh, right here and type in get player, I'm sorry, player controller. And if you click on context sensitive, it'll be much faster. Drag this guy down, drag this guy over. Plug the player controller into the target. Plug the camera actor into the new uh, view target. And then, if we hit compile, and we go to our main scene and hit save, let's see what happens. There we are. So now when we hit play, we see that it's actually showing us a little scene that we have there. And if I push up and down on the keyboard, you can't see it because it's uh, very dark, but the paddle is actually moving. But we have the correct camera here. Great. So you're saying, OK, this is uh, looking pretty good. We got a, a scene set up. We got our camera looking there. Now I won't actually see my paddle, because, I mean, this is just a background image, right? Let's fix that by making a new custom material. Go into Materials, right-click, and Create Material. We'll call this M underscore uh, unlit white. Go ahead and double-click on that. And this is going to be pretty straightforward. All you got to do is uh, left-click, or hold down 1 and left-click, and that'll create a new uh, just single-value constant. Make that 1.0. Plug that into a emissive color. Left click on, or left click on, yeah, the actual where everything plugs into, and then go into the shading model and make it unlit. Hit apply, and then hit save. And now hit save one more time in this scene, and then go to your static meshes. So everything in the scene that's not going to be background is all just going to be that unlit white. So go ahead and just open up each one of these, and we'll close out down some of these other windows we don't need. Go ahead and hit save, yes, on that reference material. Hit Close this guy, close this guy. Uh, level blueprint, we'll leave that. Go ahead just open all three of these. Ball, boundary, static mesh paddle. So we got these three guys, and you see they have the default grid pattern on them. Let's solve that. Go to the world grid material over here under the LED. Select unlit white. Boundary, unlit white, paddle, unlit white. Great. So now you have all these set up, let's go ahead and go back to the main view, and let's see what happens when we hit, uh, we go to our blueprint, and we'll hit play. See something special over there? There's your paddle, it's moving. It's actually there, and it's moving around. That's exactly what you want. So, uh, one more thing to change with the materials. We probably want to make it so that these, uh, <laughs> these actual uh, scores here aren't dark as well. So, this is using the default text material opaque. But what you can also do is um, you can make your own uh, material for your font uh, very easily. 
so what we'll do here is we'll just go to uh, the little arrow here that says Browse to Asset and Content Browser. And you'll see all of a sudden this window opens up and there's a whole bunch of stuff here. This has opened up a separate folder called Engine Content and Engine C++ Classes. This is basically the stuff that controls the engine of the game. Be very cautious when you're in here not to delete something by accident. So be careful at this point. What we want to do is we want to grab this default material for the text. Uh, I forget what it's always called. It's text mesh, text uh, text render actor. We want to set it so we have our own that glows, you know, even without light. So we clicked on here and we click this little uh, arrow or look, little magnifying glass. Then it navigates right into this little folder here and says default text material opaque. That's that's almost basically what we want. We're like, okay, that looks pretty good. Um, now in here there may be another one that's an unlit. So you got translucent. You got some other ones here. But for our case, I'm just going to make a brand new one. That way we can edit it and you can change it however you like. Go ahead and right click on that object and click duplicate. Name this uh, custom pong text. Actually, make it with an M in front of it. Put M underscore pong text. That's good enough. Now don't leave it in this folder. That way we know we don't leave it in the engine folder. Take it and go ahead and grab that and move it to the materials folder and left click and hold and then click move here. Under the materials folder you'll now see we have this new uh, text material. So at this point we don't need to see the engine content anymore. The way, easy way you can fix that is go to view options, the bottom right of the content browser. Go to uh, one of these options here for show engine content. Boom. Click that off. Now we're back into uh, the normal area where it's a little more comfortable. You don't see all that stuff on the side. But the engine folder is really cool and useful. We got this material here. Let's go ahead and drag this right into here. And it's now plugged in. You say, oh, that, that looks good, right? Oh, that must be different. Nope. We haven't changed anything. We've got to make this an unlit material. Very easy to do that. Double click on it. Uh, left click on this where everything plugs in. Go to the shading model. Type in uh, unlit. Then take the vertex color and drag that to the emissive color. Actually, we'll just break that. You can left click on any node point to break uh, the wire. Plug in an emissive color. Hit apply. And now, if we go back to our scene, hit save, and hit play. Oh yeah, look at that. See how it shows up? Great. Click on the other one. Drag that onto there. And just to be sure that we have everything looking pretty in our game, let's go ahead and just go to our uh, box brush. That's our background. Maybe we could just rename that to reference uh, reference BSP or BPS and just turn that off. Actually, you know what? I think in the actual one you actually run it, it may or may not go away. So just take it and drag it up. That's that reference we had over there. Remember that? Now let's hit play and boom, you can see our paddle shows up. We can move the paddle. Oh, it's a little slow. And we also have our uh, text actors showing up in the scene. So at this point, this is a good stopping point. We've got our material looking right, we've got our camera looking right, and we've got the scene coming together. So hopefully this was informative. Um, I'm going to leave it here, and in the next video, we're going to move on to uh, finalizing the uh, paddle controls, uh, and then moving on from there. So thanks a lot. Hope this was helpful, and if you appreciate this video, feel free to like, subscribe, and comment. And if you're uh, feeling generous, uh, I also have fan funding enabled for my YouTube channel, uh, which you can find more about um, on my homepage on YouTube. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one.